Please welcome Dan, who shares about his friendship and his journey into making quilts. Welcome, Dan. Thank you. Morning. morning. This morning, I'd like I'd like to share the story of how I learned to quilt. This is a story about friendship more than anything else. We must go back to the summer of 2011. Five years ago, I made a decision to take a four-year learning course called EFM. That stands for Education for Ministry. EFM is a program that brings people together to study their Christian faith and to engage in theological reflection. That meeting took place in this room every Monday night for four years. Uh, I graduated a year ago in May. This is where I met Michelle Keppen. Michelle lives in Madison. Every week she would drive to Sioux Falls in order to attend EFM with me. Um, we both had become very close friends over those four years. And last summer when I had my foot surgery, Michelle drove to Sioux Falls from Madison once a week to visit me and take me out to eat. She continues to come to Sioux Falls once a week to visit me. Michelle is an extraordinary person. She's the most organized person I've ever met, and she can multitask better than anyone. She manages her husband's construction company. She's active in church and community, and she is a quilter. And I once made the mistake of expressing my interest in learning <laughs> how a quilt is made. <laughs> Fast forward January 1st of this year. Michelle invited me to Madison to spend two days with her. I had no idea what was in store for me. She was going to show me how to quilt. It is a tradition for Michelle that on January 1st of every year, she quilts and she watches Gone with the Wind and other movies like that. When I arrived, she gave me a queen size quilt. That's the one. It was a kit with all the fabric and directions included. It was a gift to me from Michelle. <coughs> so for two days, I learned how to cut fabric, sew a quarter inch seam allowance, I learned how to iron the seams, and I learned how to piece all the pieces together. I also learned how to take out stitches. I probably took out more than I put in. <laughs> in between, we watched movies, including Gone with the Wind, as Martha, her black lab, sat beside me on the couch. <laughs> At the time, Michelle did not know that she was creating a quilting monster. <laughs> <laughs> so this was my introduction to quilting. I thoroughly enjoyed myself those two days. But how was I to finish the quilt? I did not have a sewing machine. After returning to Sioux Falls, I decided to purchase a sewing machine so that I could actually work on my own quilt by myself. I had no clue as to what lay ahead. So I anxiously purchased a sewing machine, then I purchased a small quilt pattern and some fabric and began work on my second quilt. I just gotta trust, yeah. And that one's really rather simple, but that's the first quilt I made totally by myself from scratch. I'm also a photographer, as you people know, so I enjoy the visual arts, and I came to realize that quilting is also an art. And I began to use Photoshop to help me design quilts. Quick, quickly, within the next few weeks, I created two more quilts. <laughs> those two. The insanity had begun. <laughs> At this point, I'd, I'd like to, when I began, I knew nothing. And I'd just like to share some of the, the basic simple steps in the process of making a quilt. The first thing, of course, is choosing a design. There's thousands of designs you can buy in the stores or online. 
And then once you choose a design, then you've got to choose the fabric. All, you know, you can choose a design and have any different number of colors added to it. Once you've chosen your fabric, you need to cut the fabric. And that's where you cut all the pieces, the strips that you're going to need for that particular quilt. The next step is taking all of those pieces and piecing them together on your sewing machine. Once it's pieced together, you need to flip it all over and iron the seams flat on the back side. The next step is what they call basting the quilt, and I brought this as an example. This, consider this to be the front where I've done all the piecing. You have to also have a back, which is normally plain, you know, it hasn't been pieced. And then you need to choose um, what's called the batting, the padding in between. And there are all kinds of different thicknesses of batting that you can purchase at the stores. Um, at this point, I, what I do is I go to the, one of the quilt stores in town and they help me pick out a batting and a backing. And then I leave my quilt there and they do the actual quilting design. Uh, so the next step is quilting. That's when you see the, the, the design that they sew onto quilts, the thread, the stitching. That, the word quilting is what that is, the actual stitching of those designs onto the quilt. Some people hand stitch. My neighbor's been doing this. She's been hand stitching a quilt for two years. One quilt, and she's not done. She doesn't know when she's going to finish. You can do it on a sewing machine. It's very difficult, but most people like me take it into someone who does that on a great big machine. It's as big as this room, and it's a, a computerized sewing machine that um, stitches out the design. Once it's done at the store, you get it back. It looks kind of like this, and then the final uh, step is called binding, where you put the edge on it. That I do at home. So that's the process of making a quilt. Quilting, what has it done for me? It's given me something to do. <laughs> it, it takes my mind off my problems and worries. It gives me a purpose, allows me to use my creative abilities. And the next thing that Michelle taught me is that I must share my gifts. Of the numerous quilts that Michelle has made, she gives them all away, often to charity. She rarely keeps anything that she makes. She has told me that I also needed to learn to share my creations. So after my first four quilts, I decided to make a quilt for my friend Randy. And most of you have met him. He's been to meetings on occasion here. Make sure I got the right one. <clears throat> I've lost my place, sorry. It was an extremely difficult and complex quilt. I started this quilt in March, and it's by far the most complex quilt I've, I've made to date. Um, I put it together, took it apart, put it together, took it apart multiple times. It was really a struggle getting all the points to match. I finished it in July. It's purple because that's Randy's favorite color. I gave it to him uh, three, four weeks ago, and he was absolutely overwhelmed by it. In June of this year, my friend Michelle discovered she had kidney cancer. This was discovered by accident during an MRI for her back problems. As you can imagine, this hit me pretty hard since we'd become such good friends. She planned to have surgery to have the kidney removed in July, and we were all hoping that it would turn out positive. At that point, she asked me to make a quilt for her church in Madison. Wow. She knew that she would not be able to quilt while recovering from surgery. The quilt is to be hung behind their altar during the red liturgical days of the church year, such as Pentecost, and there's a cross that will stick up in that red area there when it's hung. So 
by the freestanding altar. I spent the last four weeks working on this quilt and it will be dedicated at her church the end of September. Michelle had her kidney removed on July 23rd. And the doctors say the news is good. The cancer has not metastasized and she is cancer free. I am now working on my 11th quilt. I haven't showed you all of them here since January 1st. I call it my icon quilt. Wow. I love Eastern Orthodox iconography, and this is actually in the process, process of being designed. It's not sewn together at all, and that's what I've done in Photoshop, and it will look something like that, and that'll be a wall hanging when I'm finished. And finally, you may be asking, what about the Red Dragon, the title of my speech? <laughs> I saw this pattern in a book back in February or March, and I was intrigued by the design. This is the actual pattern I saw in the book, so I spent literally two months picking out the red and black fabrics um, for this particular quilt. And as you know, I had surgery on May 3rd, so I hadn't begun it yet. But as I was recovering, I would <laughs> my sewing room was in my kitchen, so I would go and stand on one leg um, with my handicap stuff, and I would cut the strips. And eventually, piece by piece, it came together. And the contrast of the fiery red and black reminded me of a Chinese dragon. So I named it the Red Dragon. When I finished the front of the quilt, I decided to make my own design on the rear side. Normally, people don't do a rear design, they just do a front. So this quilt can be used on both sides. And so that's what you see here. This is the rear of the quilt. Uh, I took the, when it was finished, I took it to the store. They did the, the quilting, the design, and I brought it home last week. I'm currently just putting the binding around it. I had hoped to have it finished for today, but it is not. At this point, I would like to show it to you. So I'll just need someone to help me hang in here or just whoever. And uh, let's do the front first. It's kind of dirty. Anyway, that's lengthwise. That's what it looks wow. like. Wow. Oh my gosh. And uh, anyway. There's thousands of pieces in it. Let's, and then let's turn it around here. I'll give you that. And here's the back side. And I really should tip this. I want to show you here. Yeah, move this way. And, and Lindsay, what's the center symbol say? Dragon. Dragon. Oh, wow. That is so cool. Oh, so I designed That's the back side. Anyway, so I wanted to share that with the group. Wow. And my journey for this spring. Although the, the speech is about quilting, it is really ultimately about friendship. This quilt and all the other quilts came into existence simply because of a friendship. We never know what a, how a friendship can change our lives. I've had many angels that have come into my life over the years, and Michelle is one of those people. We've learned a lot from each other, and along the way, I have met a lot of others who enjoy this art. I've even discovered other guys in Sioux Falls that quilt. <laughs> I never dreamed that when I spent a cold January New Year in Madison, South Dakota, that I would end up a quilting monster. And I never knew where my friendship would take me. <laughs> 